Good evening, everybody. All right, if you can, go ahead, hit that bubble at the bottom lower right-hand corner. Go ahead and retweet it out. Push out some DMs. I'm going to go ahead and mute off for a minute. Look at the time, room time to fill up a little bit. If you're in the U.S., happy Thanksgiving. Ork, how are you this evening? Very good. Very good. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's uh, 3 p.m. Friday here, so uh, just starting to fantasize about that first beer. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, these uh, these three pm space times suit me, and my, my day's normally starting to wind down a bit. Yeah, it's been a pretty uh, laid back day for us here. You know, food took a long walk after that. Maybe do a little bit of uh, hiking tomorrow, just to get some more exercise in. But yeah, just a day of family time. Food, chilling. Yeah, no, I remember when I was living in the US, I had at least one Thanksgiving there, and it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, could hardly uh, get up out of the chair after eating. We should have Polly joining us and Felice. Let's see. Yes, yeah, a few of the regulars are still missing. We'll give them a few minutes. I am away from my home setting, so I don't have any music I can necessarily play. Um, if everybody can go ahead and push out those invites. Get some people up here that speak as well. What is the thumbs down there, Polly? What the hell is that? We need your smooth voice up here on the stage. Yeah, see, there's no sign of our friend Stabber. He's normally lurking around this time of day. Yeah. And I'm going to mute off here, pull up some charts so we can go through some market stuff as we get rolling. Polly, how are you today? Hope you got some food in your stomach. Yeah, man, I'm good. Am I coming through? Can you hear me? Yep. Loud and clear. Yeah, no, I'm good. Man. Whatever you're doing, don't move from that spot. 
Yeah, right. No, no, my mom, she actually usually has pretty good Wi-Fi, but today there's some weird going on. Might have to drop off and jump on the other Wi-Fi. Come back up. No, it's all. Yeah, no, it man. seems it's to be doing It's been a great okay. day, actually. I got into work early and um, got a lot of shit done, and then was able to come home and watch the Cowboys lay the smack down on the Redskins. I mean the Commanders. Sorry, I'm not supposed to say Redskins. <laughs> Especially on Thanksgiving. That's probably even worse that I just said Redskins on Thanksgiving. Oh, man. <laughs> no. Always a good bit of humor in this yeah, room, it is, isn't it? Uh, I was being serious. That's probably really bad. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I felt bad for a second, but not anymore. Um, no, man, I'm good. How about you? Did you get to spend some time with the parents or what, bro? Oh, yeah. Who's on the Zeno Mining account if you're on your account? Or are you on both, both accounts? That's how I roll, man. Multitasking. Oh, that's why you're getting feedback. There we go. I can hear myself talking. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. I turned it down. But yeah, man. How about you? Spent some time with family, hanging out. Oh yeah, playing. My Getting sister fat. had, as I started to say, my sister had surgery, so um, she's been kind of laid up. So yeah, it was just kind of a chill day with family, um, relaxing. Your course, sister got though. laid up. <laughs> That's knocked up. My bad. I was, uh, sorry, mine's in the wrong place. <laughs> Uh, Rob, Rob, do you guys celebrate Thanksgiving down in New Zealand? It's not a Thanksgiving holiday, obviously, because it's a U.S. thing. But is there any type of a uh, something similar to Thanksgiving in New uh, Zealand? No, not really. Uh, we have our own holidays at different time of the year, but we, um, because the uh, the uh, the younger generation uh, here, and I'm talking about those sort of you know thirty and under. I grew up largely on a diet of U.S. television. A lot of the U.S. holidays have sort of crept in here. So we now, yeah, when I was a kid, we never celebrated Halloween, but now it's pretty big here. You um, guys don't and, celebrate like the day for you guys would be like the when the all the New Zealanders like slaughtered the British trying to take over the island. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, we got that uh, Maririki. There's a new one. There another it day is. off. That's it. That's another day off. That's the main That's how thing. We celebrate holidays here too. We need like, more days. What days do you get off? Those are holidays. So we the, the oh. country pretty much grinds to a halt at Christmas time for about two weeks. The whole place shuts up. Oh, um, shit. Then we've got Auckland anniversary day at the end of January. Um, which is so, yeah, that's sort of midsummer for us. Um, then what else have we got? We've got uh, Anzac Day celebrates our. Uh, I think it's a bit like your guys' Veterans Day. Yeah. Um, we have Easter, nice big break at Easter. Um, Queen, well, it's not Queen's birthday anymore. We get a day off for the King's birthday in June. That's normally midwinter, so it's not. Uh, yeah, it's just a day off work. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, and Labor Day. Um, that's the end of October. We get a day off there too. Surprised you guys don't have like a day for all the convicts that get out of jail early. Since that's <laughs> what happens over there. No one has yeah. to stay in jail. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've got... Uh, so- we've just had a change of government. So that, that's one of their big plans is to, to sort that out. No. Is to lock everybody up? Yeah, or lock, <laughs> lock them back up. Yeah, lock, lock them back, back up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the, one of the first things when I met Mark and he, we were talking about like the judicial systems in the States versus New Zealand. That's one of the things that always got me, man. Like you can basically, well, not basically, you can commit murder there and like be out on like house arrest and do some community service. Yeah. Over here, you get like 25 to life. 
and these uh, are yeah, the guys who do their home uh, home detention, as we call it. They get these ankle bracelets that they've got to wear, but they must have uh, they must be sourcing them out of bloody Taiwan or China or something, because as soon as the guys get home, they just cut them off. So uh, you know, every second crime is committed by some guy who's meant to be on home detention, but he's just cut his ankle bracelet off. It's bloody crazy. Savage. Yeah. Savage. Not one and done. Let's just keep doing it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what, what's what's on the agenda, Vince? What are we? We're talking about how Bitcoin fixes everything tonight. Uh, that's what it looks like. The title is that uh, Fleet set up, and and Fleet isn't here to 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 teach it about what this uh, Bitcoin <laughs> fixes. This cool, catchy title that Fleet set up, and he's not here. It's cool. Yeah. Bit, yeah. Bitcoin fixes everything. I would I would argue. I would argue that we should change that to whiskey, but okay. Bitcoin, we'll go Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let's get into a little bit of the uh, the market status. If you guys have been paying attention, um, we're nearly at a $1.4 trillion market cap. Um, you know, if you guys remember back to the height of the market, we were like 3.2, I think, is where we kind of peaked. Um, so we're halfway there. Uh, so we have a lot of price appreciation to go on Bitcoin and a lot of altcoins. Um, Bitcoin dominance is uh, right around 52. Um, and typically we will see that number rise as we get into the um, happening. And Bitcoin tends to take over more of that market dominance. Uh, so it's good to keep an eye on that. Uh, Bitcoin is trading right uh, just over 37, right around 37,400 right now. Ethereum just over 2,000. Um, Litecoin 69, almost 70 now. Doge is uh, 0.076. And uh, Kadena 58, almost 59 cents. Uh, and the reason we want to touch on those, obviously, is because those are the ones that we are mining. So keep an eye on what those are doing as we we're accumulate. Not, we're not going to talk about Solana or Avalanche. Um, why would we? Yeah, that was a joke. I was being sarcastic. <laughs> Although, um, if you've been kind of digging into any kind of the the news and some of the gaming projects and things like that. AVAX is supposed to be really, really hot this market uh, when it comes to gaming. Um, so I've heard a lot of positives about AVAX. I personally have some AVAX. Um, I like actually like the chain. It's pretty quick. I don't know too many instances where gas is crazy or the network is down so um i, I actually do uh, like avax um and I, as a game uh, one, yeah. for the yeah. record i wasn't sh i wasn't shitting on solana or avax to each his own like if you want to dump a bunch of money in to solana or avax like yeah go be have have at it do do your thing we actually have a game i don't know that's something we don't ever really talk about we don't actually have Maybe I didn't word that right. Like we don't currently have a game that you can go play, but it's on a roadmap to be mm -hmm. developed. First person shooter. It's going to be dope. It's one of the things that's on the roadmap that's uh, pretty exciting that we never really talk about. But that would be interesting to see as this market kind of trends that way, or at least that's what the that's what the uh, the experts are saying. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to see, you know, and, and what do we end up with our game and what chain it ends up on from that standpoint? Um, I think it would, uh, you know, being that we're on Ethereum already and it, maybe keeping it on the EVM chain, if AVAX is it's cheap on its transactions um, and if it's really going to be big on gaming, it might not be a bad idea for us to utilize that AVAX uh, portion of the EVM to for Yeah, we've our had game. some good good conversations with some of the kind of top guys on the chain. And it's, it's really interesting, man. The, there's just so many opportunities to go in so many different directions right now. I think uh, what we're doing with the coins that we're mining, we're in a good position. And then with the XRP um, collection and kind of other discussions throughout 
the upcoming collections that we'll have pushed out and cross chain kind of collaboration that we're doing now with other projects. Like it's, it's kind of put us in a really good position to diversify and yeah, not be stuck in one place and, and make some smart decisions for the investors in our community. And uh, the other thing, yeah, obviously there's uh, um, the coins we're mining, um, which have been carefully selected for various reasons. But um, if you're new to the Discord, um, there's always a wealth of uh, knowledge being shared. Um, we have our uh, Crypto Sensei who comes and talks to us sort of once a month. Um, and a few of those tokens that have been discussed in the Discord in the last month are, uh, are mooning at the moment. So uh, um, BioFi was, was mentioned a while ago. A few of us picked some up. It, it's up. Uh, two or three hundred percent um, just in a in about six weeks. Uh, Root Network just launched their uh, their own token. Um, that's uh, they're part of the Futureverse, um, one of our partners, um, and that's that's obviously gone from zero to about uh, I think it's about three cents just in the matter of a day or two. Um, XDC is another one that was mentioned by Crypto Sensei. Mm -hmm. That's well up. So, um, yeah, it's just, um, you know, if you hang, join the Discord, hang out with us, there'll be, uh, you know, we're all traders. We're all looking to um, to share the knowledge. And there's, uh, yeah, lots of, uh, lots of nuggets that'll be dropped. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we have... Uh, make, make money. We want to make, make money, money. <laughs> for ourselves and our community. <laughs> bottom line yeah um has any of you guys taken uh, any good portions of the educational course for december any feedback on that i haven't started it yet man um just been obviously busy at work and then busy with what we're doing here dog face labs but i did look at the course and kind of read up on it and um i think we just yeah it's it's the again the opportunity to provide resources to the community at a discounted price on what you would normally be paying. Um, I th I'm pretty sure we have a couple of guys that have already started or completed. Uh, so I'd be interested to kind of hear some feedback from the team and some of the guys that have completed the course already. But even the past courses that we've offered and some of the AI stuff, like it's already proved to be helpful for me, even in my IRL job and some of the stuff I'm doing. So it's a big opportunity for sure. Leo, what's up, man? Hey, a couple things. Um, there was two trading uh, educations, one for November, which was a chat GDP and the trading bot pairs. And that the second one is a sniper bot school. And the sniper bot school, you can do the first week in the pre-training. And then you got to um, create an exchange. One of their exchanges, you have to get the trading platform. And then you got to submit, you got to do a, uh, you got to deposit $100 for uh on crypto and then you gotta wait till you get verified before you can go on to the second week and the third week training. Okay. So me and Fleece uh, How do we me and Fleece are are both done the first week and we're just waiting to get verified to start the second week. Okay. So how long did it take you to get access to the first week? Oh instant. Yeah you automatically get it. Yep. Okay. But there's but there's um but there's like an hour of pre-training, you know, for really basics. Okay. But there's no fee. It's all free. And uh, the only fee, well, the only fee is you have to, in order to get the second week and beyond, you have to deposit a hundred, but I bought XRP. So there's no fee because <laughs> I want to buy it anyway. Okay. So, you know, there was no fee. <laughs> I just took my XRP that I had in Zoom is it called Zoom? Z U M M or something like that? Uh, the you talking about the XRP wallet? Yeah, X U X U M M or something like that. Yeah, I think they actually pronounce it Zum, the Zum wallet. Okay, so I took I took a hundred USD out of that and transferred it to um, Coin W, which is one of their exchanges. So I never purchased anything. I just dropped my hundred XRP in there and and it paid for the course, but it didn't. You know, I didn't have to pay anything. 
Yeah, if you guys are watching, uh, I just saw a news article that came out and some some XRP price targets. Um, some of the analysts predicting 470, 470 for XRP. Now, whether we get to that or not, it's going to take a lot of utility to be able to get there. Um, and I think that goes back to the regulation of uh, whether we get some approvals, um, what Bitcoin does, the ETFs and things like that. Um, but there are, uh, another article that I saw was nearly 6.5 billion in Bitcoin and Ethereum options are set to expire, um, on November 24th. So it'd be interesting to see how that affects the market, uh, tomorrow, right? Yeah. Tomorrow that should be hidden. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of price action we see tomorrow on Friday, um, and see as we go into the weekend uh the beautiful thing is is that crypto is the only thing that's trading right now you know since we trade 24 7 with crypto uh it's a much different environment moves a lot quicker um with everything going on with the trading aspect of it so um but um some good stuff so you know keep your eyes on the market i think we're going to see a lot of volatility through the end of the year um but a lot of opportunity on the, on these dips to start picking up and adding little by little to your bags. Right. So, um, yeah. And, and Vince, uh, two alphas for you, um, at the end of December is a full moon. Cause I know you're into that. Yep. And then in Twitter, there's actually two hints and, and, um, spoilers that BlackRock will be involved in the ETF of XRP. BlackRock will be involved in what now? In the ETF? Yeah, for the XRP, if they do it. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised in any way that BlackRock has their hands in in every little bit of nook and cranny of of what goes on in the market. Now, again, like what we talked about before, whether they're actually doing it directly or whether they're doing it through um, other companies that they own. I, I definitely think they're going to have exposure into it because um, if they don't already have exposure to it, you know, and again, that's a lot of that stuff we don't know. Um, but with that being said, um, you know, do we even, I don't even see fleece in here yet. Do you um, Bitcoin fixing everything? That's a curious title to me. Um, do we feel like crypto in itself or Bitcoin is going to be the fix um, or not? I'm not sure that it is. I mean, I know that it's the king of the market. Um, but when it comes to uh, the transaction fees of sending it, again, you hear a lot of talk of it being the store of value. But unless they can improve things um, and, and make it such that it's more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, economical to send, um, I know you can you leverage the Lightning Network. Um, I think this is where Caspa's come into the market to try to build on what top of what uh, Bitcoin has been able to do, but maybe not fully achieve. Uh, so I think we'll see some of that as well. Um, if you guys, Caspa, going back to what Rob was talking about earlier, um, yeah, Crypto Sensei and them, they were talking about Caspa when it was down below two cents. I think they were buying it at like one cent. Uh, when they were talking about it and my god if you were if you were on board and had the liquidity and were able to i mean look at what it's doing now it's like is it at 12 cents now or back up to 13 something like that leo do you know um Let's see. right now yeah it's just under 13 cents he would have 13 extra money Man, that's huge, you know, um, and this is the early opportunities that we want to continue to bring to the community through these resources like Crypto Sensei and then offering the educational components so you guys learn a little bit of the TA and how to go about then taking some of these profits, purchasing some of these cryptos or getting access to them. Um, when these guys are, some of these guys are, that's all they do is deep dive into it and find the opportunities. Um, reading charts, looking at charts, 
looking at new projects that are coming the teams behind them um, and bringing them to the community uh, early. So it's nice that we have Crypto Sensei that comes in and does this. Um, if you already belong to his community, then you're able to catch his Sensei chats. And again, this all goes back to the value that we want to create within um, Zeno and Dogface Labs, right? So Paulie, I did see you mute off for a second there. I didn't know if you wanted to pipe in on something there. Oh man, I was just going to mention, um, I think like what you were talking about with the opportunities, right? Like in kind of the education side of things, uh, coming into this community, like there was a lot that I didn't know. Uh, and I think we're all like still constantly learning, um, as the market evolves. And then as we each, you know, I mean, every day, like learning something new and continuing to, to upskill ourselves. But I think that's one of the things that's important to know is to ask questions. Like, you know, I, I know Mark talked about this, uh, I remember it was a couple of days ago or it might've been at last night's space, how, um, and I'm, I'm the same story, right? Like, a, you know, we've come into this, not even using discord and starting as mods. And, you know, now he's the president of dog face labs and here I am the CEO and like where we started with little to no education, um, obviously both trading and crypto some mark more than I was. Um, but I think the education and knowledge that's coming from the community and then just the conversations, right? Like having conversations like this and kind of talking about things and you, you don't have to agree. Like we don't always have to agree on everything and we don't, we don't always agree on everything, but that's part of the, the community and coming in and having conversations. And then, you know, maybe I hear something from you, Vince, maybe I hear something from Rob, from Leo, from Mark, whoever it is um, that, you know, kind of catches my ear and I pay attention and, you know, it ends up to be something that turns out, you know, in a positive. So I think that's, that's all I was going to mention, man, is just having these conversations and being a part of this community and just being here and listening in, uh, even if you're not com comfortable to come up and speak, it's cool. Um, but ask questions. Like if there's something you're not sure about or a decision that you, you know, are hesitant to pull the trigger on or whatever it is. And obviously like, you know, we're not running around giving everybody like financial advice and telling you where to go spend your money. Uh, but we're going to give you our opinion. Opinions are like assholes, but you <laughs> know, I think that's where you kind of come together as a group. And that's really what this is, is it's an investor's group and, you know, make decisions that obviously first and foremost are best for you and your, you know, your financial setup and your family. And, you know, don't, don't go bet the house on, you know, Vince is telling you to invest all your money in Ripple. Um, you know, don't go mortgage your house to do it, you know, play with, play with house money, even though it's kind of an oxymoron, but, uh, I think, you know what I mean? Like if you have something that you're invested in and you see a profit come back and, you know, you have the opportunity to now pull some of those funds out and leave some in, and now you're playing with house money. You really can't go wrong, man. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, and when it's house money, it's got a nice beat to it. It's, 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 it's. Oh, house music. Oh, I like what you did there. That was slick. That was slick. I like it. Only a DJ, Vince. Only a I, DJ. I can resist throwing that in there. <laughs> no, man. I think, uh, you know, it is It is interesting. Like, the Bitcoin fixes everything. Like, um, yeah, I'm sure, as, as with probably most things in life, like, you can argue both sides of the fence, right? Like, uh, there's a lot of people out there that have lost their ass, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the crypto market, but there's also some people that, you know, have purchased during a bear market. And I'm not talking really more so the, the most recent market, but in past markets. And then, you know, Bitcoin's hit some, some pretty legitimate highs through some bull markets. And, you know, those people are doing pretty well, man. So <laughs> in yep. those cases, like, yeah, uh, this probably sounds bad, but this has kind of always been my, one of the things that I believe, man, is that, you know, money can cause a lot of problems in a lot of different ways. Uh, it can cause problems in relationships. It can cause problems, you know, personally for you, mental health, like a, a lot of things. Right. But man, when you're raking in the dough and things are going well, you know, a lot of times life's going well, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes right. it's mo, mo money, mo problems. But Very true. yeah, in, in my experience, that's not, that hasn't been the case yet for me. Well, it's because you've got like 20 kids. So, you know, there no, is no. Because I got Mark. <laughs> I got my financial advisor. 
that I can just go to and be like, hey, what do you think? And he'll be like, ah, I would do this. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks. Not financial advice. Do your own research. Well, I, I do want to touch on the fact that, uh, you know, I think it is, you know, if you guys have ever heard this adage, I mean, it, life is hard, right? Uh, hard enough as it is. But, and it's hard when you're broke, but, and it's hard when you got money. But wouldn't you rather life be hard with and having the resources to be able to do things? You know, I mean, either way, there's some growth that's going to come with it, right? Because, you know, you start looking at, at okay, you have, in three to three to five years from now, you know, you're sitting on uh, income coming in from all the proof of work mining rewards, right? You, you need to strategically learn uh, what are you going to do with those funds to continue to secure them, right? Continue to grow it, right? So there's still problems. You're still going to have to overcome these things. You're just going to have a new set of learning problems, right? To, you know, to overcome, but it may be much easier to say, hey, that light bill's there. Hey, I have no problems paying it. I'm more interested in trying to keep and, and grow what I have already instead of trying to figure out where am I going to get some more income to pay for that bill, right? So it's a different set of problems to have, but you're in a much better position to provide for your family or for yourself if you are single, right? Um, and what those options that the money gives you of what to do with, Um and I think that's a pretty important thing is, is during this process, who are you becoming as you grow this, right? And you become uh, a little bit more financial savvy and smart with your money decisions, right? Um, because you're, you're right. Money can affect people positively and it can and affect them negatively as well. So uh, the question does, you know, you know, have to be addressed is who are you becoming, you know, as you start making this money from the mining rewards, uh, who are you going to become during this process? Right. Yeah, bro. Great point, man. That's why I think it's like I said, the, sorry, the kids, kids running around. It's Thanksgiving. All the little girls are running around making a bunch of noise. I tried to, I tried to get away from everyone, but they followed me. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's why I guess what I'm saying, like, too, is, you know, the, the what you see in this group uh, and not just the team, but the community is uh, there's no complacency. Right. Like, regardless of what's going on in the market, regardless of what's going on with funds, the mining, like the operations, like everything that we're doing, there's no complacency. We're constantly trying to improve on what we already have started or, you know, built. And that's I think that's what's the most exciting is, you know, having a team of dudes that you know are constantly trying to evolve and improve and grow and build um we're yeah we're just super early in what we're doing and, and with the market and where the market's at now and the expectations um at least from what i see uh and it's there's a lot of things that that depends on right um elections uh i think it's one of the you know going to be one of the big deciding factors in what you see the market do but mm -hmm. i think with the group of guys that we have regardless of what happens there's there's really no negative for us because we'll just shift and adjust as needed and continue to build and grow. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, with us being here, having these spaces, talking about some of the things that are in the news, being aware of them helps us to make smart decisions with our money. Um, kind of touching back on, you know, we were talking about Ripple and, you know, and XRP and XRP collection a little bit. Um there's been some reported news that Ripple's in talks with the UK government um, regarding the NFTs and the XRP ledger itself, right? So, um, again, you know, as these things start to become more and more fast paced and the adoption starts to come, you know, this utility is what's really going to drive the price appreciation. Now, I'm actually kind of curious. I see Aaron down in the room, and I know Aaron is big on um, mining aspects, but do you think, Aaron, that Bitcoin is going to be the answer, or do you think it's just this safe haven um, to kind of use as a store of value? Or do you think that Bitcoin is actually going to be something that does provide a fix? Um, kind of curious to see some other opinions on that i you know I, I think each crypto itself is going to kind of serve its own utility um 
That's why we've talked heavily about XRP and its involvement within banks. Um, and as you can see in the news uh, with governments as well, um, I just saw another bit of news that another exchange, a Japanese exchange, was listing XRP on its lending platform. So I think as you start to get into some of the price appreciation on these things, I think that one of the things that people may want to do is consider, all right, holding on to the assets that you collect, um, especially from proof of work mining, right? Because we're getting it below spot prices. Is it actually advantageous to start becoming our own bank by holding on to these assets and leveraging the assets, pulling cash out? as a loan against your assets, right? Now you have to be very intelligent when you do this because um, obviously your assets are the collateral. Um, but then if you pay the loan off, you get your assets back, right? So is it going to be where we're now, because we're here so early with the price appreciation and utility that we'll actually be able to be almost essentially become our own banks? bypassing the need to go to a typical traditional banking institution to get loans for other assets, whether that be real estate, whether that be a vehicle, anything like that. Um, I don't know. How about you, Cork? Have you, have you put any thought into that or looked at that kind of perspective on this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, although you've, you've got to be careful. The downside with that is uh, obviously you're giving up if you're using your Bitcoin as collateral, you're giving up custody. Um, and as a few of us found out, because uh, that's exactly what I was doing with Celsius. Um, so <laughs> um, my Bitcoin stash uh, is no longer mine at the moment. I'm hoping to get a good portion of it back. But um, yeah, so you've got to be a little, there is a downside there. But I think long term, definitely, it's... Uh, it's the way uh, the way things are going to go. Um, I think I, I was just looking at that title there. Bitcoin fixes everything, and I I think the the key point there is it, it it's an it's providing an alternative financial system for the world, and um, because with the current fiat system, it um, basically the governments are using it to fix or cover up their cock ups. Um, so, you know, there's no incentive for them to, uh, you know, to make clever and smart decisions because if, if it doesn't work out, they just manipulate, uh, you know, interest rates or um, inflation um, to cover it. Um, where with Bitcoin, you know, they, they cock up their, their history. So... Um, yeah, no, that's that's how I see something like Bitcoin fixes everything. Yeah, it's probably not going to be Bitcoin on its own, as you touched on it. There's, uh, yeah, XRP, and yeah, you know, there's there's a good solid, you know, dozen or so cryptocurrencies that um, will probably make up the the world financial system in in you know years to come. Yeah. I, I uh, you know, uh, before I kind of jump into another aspect of that, is there Polly's or or Leo's or anything you want to add to that, or even John Wick? I see you up here on the on the panel as well. Anything you guys want to pipe in on that particular aspect? Yeah, just two quickies. Uh, number one, um, hey Sir Cork, what's the um, token you were talking about for the Root Network? Is it Root? Yes. Yeah, it was just launched uh, midway. Company is. Okay, and then the second thing is the thing that I've learned always about leverage and and um, and loans like that is um, if you over if you overdo it, it's easy to get liquidated. Yeah, I think if you keep your percentage of of cash pull against your asset, the lower you keep it, the less risk you have. Obviously, right? The price would have to really drop down in order for you to have to worry about getting liquidated, right? So um, that that's a very real thing. Now, and the other aspect of that is, like Cork said, um, who, you, who are you giving custody of to, right? That becomes a real issue then. Um, I think that as we see some more regulation come in from the United States, 
uh, I think maybe we'll see that aspect of it become uh, less riskier from the standpoint of, of handing over that custody, right? Uh, because there will be some more regulations in place preventing these things like Celsius uh, occurring um, as well. How about you, John Wick? Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Never, um, you know, try to bet with anything that you're not willing to use or willing to lose and you have no problem losing. Um, that's one of the principles I always go by. Yeah. Um, but I think that's going to be, that's going to be a tough one because <clears throat> if you're looking at, I know for a while Tesla there was accepting Bitcoin as payments. Um, you know, do you, when you start talking about tens of, you know, or a hundred thousand dollars worth of, of assets and in borrowing against it, um, you definitely going to want a platform that has the regular regulatory, uh, structure in place to be able to handle that. Uh, I certainly hope that we're going to see that in the near future. I think that's something that I would like to consider as well for, I mean, what happens if XRP price does start to jump because it does have, uh, the utility uh, behind it. Um, I don't think we still yet know what this space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. Going to happen with the escrow uh, with XRP. Um, so that remains to be seen as well. So, yeah, uh, I, I think we're moving in the right direction as far as, uh, uh, you know, adoption and regulation. It just seems like for us, especially being in this space that it's hard to be patient because the space does move. It does. There's a lot of development. There's um, so a lot of intelligent people doing a lot of building of things in this space that make it move quite rapidly. So, you know, when you, if you're, you know, days actually feel like weeks and, and weeks feel like months, right? So that's a tough thing to, to, to kind of be patient in this space. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you definitely want to uh, try to make moves when you see the opportunity, but then you uh, end up seeming to uh, fall into the group where you see something jump up, you feel a little bit of FOMO, and then you kind of ape in. But I've been definitely not doing that as much anymore, and it's been having pretty good outcomes so far. Yeah, that's a difficult thing. Um, as we see the space even mature, do you think we're going to see even the, the nomenclature, the vernacular around some of these things start to change as well? You know, a lot of us, you know, will use the terminology degen, right, into things. Um, is, is that going to continue to be something that we are uh, going to use or do we, are we going to see the space actually um, evolve a little bit and become a little more sophisticated uh, in its language and its, during this growth phase, you know? I mean, I think it's going to kind of be similar to the way things are now to where, um, you know, on like certain platforms, you only see one type of uh, thing said and certain nomenclature used. But then if you go to places where, you know, a lot of the actual um, community kind of converses and everything like on Twitter or Instagram or different places like that, there's going to be another, well, not another, but just an additional um, type of nomenclature used kind of like similar to where when we were in the military, you would see things written on documents and stuff like that, or uh, in any type of like press uh, thing let out, it would say one thing. But then the way that kind of we all talk to each other is similar, but a little bit different to where other things are used to kind of uh, speed up things or get communication across quicker, quicker. I think it'll still be kind of used, you know, on one layer, it'll be one thing, but then, you know, in the street or, you know, just conversely conversing between two different people, it'll be something else that could be used also. Mm -hmm. Agreed. How do you feel about that, Pauly? Well, I think he's spot on, man. And it's, we've seen that like just in the, I mean, I've been trading pretty small, man, just Bitcoin, Ethereum, a few other small chains, like since around 2017, 2018, mm -hmm. Uh, but just really like diving so much deeper into space the last 30, I don't know, say 32 months. 
Um, there's been so much involvement and so much change. But you've also seen a lot of uh, coins come in and just fall off, right? Like it's the trends, it's the market, it's uh, weak shit by people that are just weak minded and don't have the drive or the, the effort of the team, you know, like we have needed to just continue to push on. But I think that, you know, that's what you'll continue to see as with any, um, with anything, like with any business, with any, uh, even like the stock market, like there's these highs and lows, you know, we talk about bears and bulls, but I think a lot of that is due to like exactly what John Wick's talking about. Like there's a lot of things that are adopted and it takes off. And there's some things that, you know, people ape in and FOMO and then all of a sudden, you know, you don't see as much value in it. The value doesn't increase. People fall off. It, it just kind of withers away. But I think that brings us back to the topic, whereas Bitcoin kind of being the big dog, like, yeah, I think you could say that about a lot of other like altcoins, but with Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, specifically, like I just don't ever see that happening. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of things kind of falling off, um, you know, I don't hear a ton about the metaverse right now. You know, I mean, it was kind of like a hot topic for, you know, a hot minute. And then it seems like it's kind of died off right now, you know, and I'm not hearing a whole lot regarding that, you know. Um, do you think the metaverse is going to make a comeback in the bull run? Or do we think that it was kind of a passing fad, uh, you know, or just just kind of the result of the market structure right now? Yeah, I don't know that it's necessarily dropped off. Um, it's all right, Cork, I'll make it quick, man, because I see you unmute and I want to hear your your take on this. I think it's just more we've kind of moved away from that. You know, our mm -hmm. community as a whole, that was important to start because of, you know, purchasing land in the metaverse and having the game on a roadmap and having land purchase and building the dog face garrison. A lot of those things that are on our roadmap. Um, we've really shifted hard to this crypto mining uh, to really produce funds for the community um, and for, you know, us as a business to be able to build a retreat. Um, so I don't know that it's necessarily fallen off. I don't follow the metaverse a lot. I never have just because for me, that's not really, you know, a huge interest for me personally. And again, not to take anything away from, or maybe people in this room now that love it and spend a lot of time there and that's cool. Uh, but for me, I'm, you know, really hyper-focused on investment opportunities to increase investment opportunities for myself and for my family. So I don't know, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say me personally that I think it's fallen off. I just think we've kind of pulled out of that, um, you know, environment where we're, we're not seeing it as much and we're not involved in it as much. Yeah. Yeah. So now, I think, uh, I think what happened was it kind of came out. It was like that new shiny thing came out and they were able to shut there was, they were able to show something off and people were like, Oh, look at that. And now it's going back into the cycle of their, you know, hibernating, whereas they're actually building something, you know, trying to make the next big thing, the next big shiny thing that they can kind of bring forward. I think that happened with everything. Like I can remember a few years back when uh, we kind of found out that, Oh yeah, they're making like a new stealth. And that was like five years ago. And now, you know, last maybe a couple of weeks ago, they're actually doing the first test flights at a B-21 Raider. So it's like that whole time they were still working. So I think it's kind of similarly with the metaverse, like people were able to show something and now they're back, you know, on the grindstone trying to make the next big thing. So I mm -hmm. think it's kind of cyclical. It'll have its time again. It'll, you know, you know, have something else to put forward to show everybody. And then it'll kind of be the same thing back into the hibernation and keep optimizing. Yeah. Cork? Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree. I, I was, before I discovered Dogface and Xeno Mining, I was spending quite a bit of time in the metaverse and investing in it and um, investing and, and uh, investing and investigating a lot of play-to-earn games who uh, a lot of them sort of take place in the metaverse. Um, but I think it's just the gen, you know, because the last 12, 18 months we've been deep in the, in the bear that people have, uh, you know, the, the excitement and hoopla around it have, have died off a bit. But uh, as John says, I, I think they are building in the background there. I don't think it's going to go away. I think, um, you know, I think it is the, is the future. Um, you know, people, uh, people are going to spend more and more time in it. Um, but, yeah, it's just, uh, just uh, yeah, waiting for the beer. I think once, once things start moving, 
once we get into the bull and all the hype builds up again, I think we'll you'll see a lot more. It'll come front and center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know we've, we've talked a lot about the gaming side of things being pretty popular as far as blockchain gaming, um, uh, you know, and I think as you start to see the move to more blockchain games becoming, you know, more mainstream and uh, more popular. And then I think that that's going to kind of go back to what John was saying about, you know, they're building in the metaverse. They've got some infrastructure that they've got to accomplish uh, to, you know, better the user experience uh, to give people these options. And then I think you're going to see that bleed over with blockchain gaming then, uh, integrating into spatials and, and metaverse again as well. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, everything, everything just like the seasons moves in a cycle. Right. So, uh, but I do also think that, you know, because of the building that we've been doing, it has been one of those things where, you know, I, I personally don't see as much of it because, you know, we're so busy doing what we're doing to build for our community, right? So um, a couple good couple good aspects there, guys, of, of that conversation revolving around the metaverse. So uh, appreciate it. All right, Leo, added you back to the speaker panel. Um, is there anything else you guys kind of wanted to add in around about that? I, I we, we normally do touch on a little bit of news outside that's a little controversial um, as well. But before I move to that, I didn't know if there's anything else that anybody wanted to cover before we go move into that. Yeah, just one little second. Um, there's a lot of millionaires. I mean, there's a gamer that uh, plays games every day for like four or five days, and the guy earns a billion a month. So it's like when this new game, Web3, came out, so not only are they earning you know, streaming, but they're earning to play the earn on the games. So they're getting double the earning. So that's, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's Vince, you were talking about this when we first started. And I guess that's what I'm saying. It's like the part of this conversation when we started, we're talking about how, you know, that play to earn gaming is seeing to grow. And in the same conversation, we're talking about how we haven't heard a lot about the metaverse. So I think it's exactly like John, Sir Core, um, you know, are saying like, there's trends. I think for us, you know, being hyper focused on mining, um, it's been awesome for us. Uh, and again, not to take away anything from anybody that's in, you know, play to earn games or spending time in the metaverse. Like that's great. It's just not my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not my cup of tea either. Um, I'd, I'd rather, you know, feel productive uh, building what we're building to bring long term uh, set of revenue as well to the community. So I know that uh, I would like to continue doing that myself. Um, not so much big on the gaming aspect of it. Maybe, you know, I know that maybe, maybe that's part of the generational thing as well. You know, um, it's not everybody's cup of tea for sure. Yeah. Um, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm down. Like if, if you know, we get to the point where, you know, we're in a good position to start to shift more focus there and build that garrison house. Dude, I'm down to spend some time there and hang out. You know, it's not, it's not like I'm above it or better than that, or it's not like I'm saying anything like that. I'm, I'm super interested in, you know, that kind of aspect of our roadmap. But yeah, again, I think right now we're, we have our focus in the right place and we'll get there one day. It'll be soon. Yeah. Yeah. And I think too, uh, along this journey, I think we, you know, we've, we've built some relationships with other projects too, that, you know, may take this gaming aspect that we want to go ahead and launch and, and fast track it for us with these relationships that we've built, you know? So that's the beauty of it as well through this whole process of just doing nothing but heads down and building that, you know, we'll be able to have these relationships that might be able to just expedite these things when we're ready to launch them on our roadmap and, and have them available for our community. So, uh, yeah. That- yeah. Head, head down as a, as Mark would say, <laughs> they do everything backwards down in New Zealand, don't they? Yeah, I don't. I remember the first time I heard him say that on the space. Really, like maybe a couple months into hosting spaces, and he said it in a space. We were talking about hard work and how we, you know, just fucking work and work and work and work and 
He was like, yeah, man, it's head down, ass up. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. That's not, I don't think, that doesn't mean what you think that means. That I don't, maybe take that back. And he's like, no, wait, no, mate, it means, and he explained it. And I was like, ah, nope, still, still not, still not what you think it means. Yeah. That's a totally different type of work. <laughs> yeah, that is putting in work. That's true, John. Good point. Good point, touche. That is putting in work. But uh, yeah, I yeah, that point. Navy work. Oh, yeah, I thought it was twerk, actually. You know, you got to put the T in front of it. All right. Well, I want to switch to topics kind of outside of crypto. Um, I don't know if you've, you've seen some news, if anybody's seen this, that there's actually been some, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the, the whole thing with, uh, the Palestinian conflict with Hamas and Israel. Um, and some of the, some of the aspects of this is bled over into, you know, the immigration aspect of it. Um, and I happened to catch, um, some news coming out of, uh, hotels that have or are housing immigrants are now being uh, reportedly firebombed, right? And I think that uh, um, some of this tension has been building over this whole process of the immigration process, you know, and, and, and jokingly, P- Polly, I mean, we might be better off, man, if we actually go outside the country and then sneak back over as illegals here in the U.S., uh, just to get some extra benefits, you know. Yeah, that's not a joke. That's actually not a joke. That's that's a legitimate <laughs> statement. Yeah, that's not a bad way to play things at all. But now, you know, it's funny is uh, it's been going on for a long time, man. Like uh, us having, I shouldn't say like the firebombing of hotels. That sounded bad. I didn't mean that we've been seeing, you know, immigrants come into the country, staying in hotels, and being firebombed for a long time. That's that's bad. Uh, what I meant was us having immigrants come into the country and just right now on our southern border, um, and I can only speak to my knowledge uh, and share some information uh, that I'm privy to share, but we're basically purchasing rooms and hotels and uh, entire hotels down mm-hmm. the southern border and housing immigrants. And when I say housing, I mean all the amenities of a hotel, mm-hmm. the, you know, breakfast and uh, continental breakfast and, you know, dinners and it's, it's uh, healthcare and like on site. So it's, it's been, yeah, it's been happening for a long time. And this conflict has now brought obviously kind of a difference too, but what it's also brought is it's also brought uh, more, I don't want to just say terrorists because it's not just terrorists because that's kind of a, Kind of a broad term, but uh, into our country mm-hmm. and from our southern border. So it's it's definitely not been good. Uh, the fact that there has been some recent attacks on immigrants that have fled to this country to escape the violence that they were a part of. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons that we live in the United States is the freedom that we have and the safety and securities that we have here in this country. Thanks to guys like John, you you know, the veterans in our community and the veterans before us and the veterans who will come after us, like for immigrants to come in this country and have to, you know, to deal with that to me, I think it's shit. man. Yeah. Um, we're seeing a lot of this, the, the immigrants taking over police stations here, uh, during their check-in processes. Um, there's a, a, an area at the airport that's just, they're sleeping on the floors, you know, and not that, uh, you know, that they don't need some assistance. But when you look at the homelessness that we have here just in the United States, because that's all I'm going to speak on, um, is, you know, the money that we're putting in to house these immigrants. Um, I've, I've experienced them personally, you know, being here uh, over the summer, um, being at the beach and them um, getting into altercations at the beach. Um it kind of, it changes the whole environment that you're in. Um, and I think that we're seeing, seeing a lot of them coming into the country and, and maybe I, I'm speaking from a little bit of ignorance, but if, if a more, if a majority of these, the immigrants coming in are of age males, 
I, I that has me a little bit concerned because you know if we're looking to help women and children, why are we letting so many of the men in and not enough of the women and children per se? Now I, I could be completely off target, and I'm happy to be off target with that assumption. Um, but I do see this causing a lot of unrest because there was you know some recent. Um, uh, stabbings in Ireland, it, it sounds like that by some immigrants, and that's causing a huge, you know, riots and, and issues over there. Now, um, I don't think we've seen that come to fruition here in the US, but I could be wrong. Um, are you guys seeing um, immigration issues where you guys are located? Cork? Leo? And I think uh, we have G that's up here as well, G. Yeah, we, uh, immigration here in New Zealand, obviously, because you've, uh, the, you know, the nearest land mass is probably Australia, and it's a reasonable sort of a swim. Um, we're, we're not having the same issues here. It's, it's um, you know, you've got to come in on a commercial airline, really, and uh, so there's more controls. So we're, we're not uh, we're not quite seeing the issues that, uh, that you're seeing in the US, and especially in Europe. I mean, I've, I've been following, there's that island... Um, it's part of Italy, but it's in the middle of the Mediterranean where the North African immigrants have been arriving by the boatload. I think the population of the island was 4,000 and, uh, and there's something like 16,000 uh, illegal immigrants have turned up in boats. It's just wow. uh, crazy. I can't remember the name of the island, but um, it's, uh, it's it's just crazy. And then someone pointed out, you know, I've been following it for a, for a few weeks and then someone pointed out that every single, you know, these are, because some news agencies call them refugees, um, but they're all, every single one of them, every single one of them was a male between sort of 18 and 30. Um, or, or I think one one re- correspondent called them, you know, of military age. So no, no women, no elderly, no children. So it does, it just seems, you know, you wonder whether it's sort of organised or, you know, I'm, I'm putting my tinfoil hat on here, but, uh, you know, whether there's something more happening behind the scenes. And then, you know, because obviously there's similar things happening with the U.S.'s southern border. So it's just, yeah, something just doesn't quite add up at the moment. But yeah, I what, think the term is sus, right? It's a yeah. Little... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gee, yeah, go for it, my man. How are you? Hey, what's going on? Hey, I love listening to you guys. Shout out to you guys. Thank you for your service. Zeno, shout out to you guys. Uh, I was just listening, but I was going to drop, but wanted to, you know, share my appreciation. And I'm thankful for you all. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to come over to the XRP, XRPL. I'm super stoked for that. Um, happy to help in any way I can. But we're definitely seeing seeing an impact here. There's been a few funny things that popped up. But, well, I know it's impacting trades here. My my father in law is involved in trades, and it's kind of changing his uh, financial situation, if I could say it that way. But sure. one thing I saw was funny is I don't know if anyone's been out to San Francisco, but they were saying that who who met out there the the governor or something and the the president from China or the king or whatever. And they, the, they, they just had the they AP got rid of all the homeless Asian, people. Asian Pacific. Yeah, like how they get rid of all the homeless people. <laughs> right, like, yeah, they cleaned, where'd they, they go? They miraculously cleaned up the whole during the city bay. for this APEC APEC summit. All of a sudden, San Francisco looks really nice while all these foreign leaders were coming in. Right, yeah, they like, threw them in the bay. Oh yeah, they're in the wharf now. How crazy! They moved them to Alcatraz. That'd be a good use for it. Nice yeah, shout out Oakland. to you guys, man. Keep doing your thing. I'm taking notes here, face down, ass up. I heard it. <laughs> Quote fleece. Uh, yeah. My wife, JV, and I were listening and, and she looked over, like, what? Because, uh, that, yeah, that means a little something different. But yeah, good financial advice. I like yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah the, the connotation is, is quite interesting when we talk, start talking about uh, slang and language differences for sure. <laughs> yeah. Some, I'm going to, some... I'm going to DYOR on that one a little later. Yeah. <laughs> 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 keep up the good work man somebody's got to do it <laughs> right yeah <laughs> well i well, hope you guys had a good thanksgiving appreciate you all 
Yeah, thank you, G. Good yeah, you day. too, G. Thanks Hello for to popping me. up, man. Yeah, for sure. Hey, where's uh, where's Philip at? I'm working on his DJ picture. Maybe I'll get that out tonight. Oh, uh, that's for oh, me. Oh, it's Vincent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. dope, dude. I, I'm I'm curious. I've been watching what you've been putting out, man. So I'll be taking a peek at each of them coming out and and seeing which. Uh, uh, waiting for the DJ one. Maybe. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of a. Do you have a cool DJ name to use for it yet? Uh, I mean, we could call it whatever you want, but I, I got a good idea for it. Hey, I, I may reach out to you later and pick your brain on on a few things. I'm curious perfect. to get kind of a outside feedback. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, Paulie, right, Joe, I'm going back on face me. Down, face down, ass up, Vinny. <laughs> yeah, smashing it, smashing it. <laughs> face down, pencil up. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Polly, Polly, let's hear more about this Apex thing, you know, with the leadership coming in. How how this is this is the the irony is this you you have these foreign leaders come in and all of a sudden the the situation with homelessness can be cleaned up, you know. Where did they go? What did they do with them? Into the San Francisco Bay. Yeah, they dumped them all off the bridge. No, just kidding. Um, it was sink or swim. Um, yeah, man. So San Francisco hosted the 2023 APEC CEO Economic Summit. Um, it was November 11th through the 17th. None of this is like law enforcement sensitive or FOU information. This is all like information available online. But it's uh, basically a summit where um, the Asia Pacific economic leaders come in and the president, uh, the governor, uh, actually vice president, like staff, um, governor's cabinet staff, like, and all these Asian Pacific, you know, leaders came in and discussed, you know, foreign policy, uh, economic policies to be more specific and leading into the event, obviously there's a high level of security um, and inter cooperation between state, federal and local agencies to ensure the security of these world leaders when they come into San Francisco, uh, you know, not bringing them all into the same airport, not having them all travel in the same groups. Like, uh, and you guys that are in the military know exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. Um, and it was funny because there was a, yeah, a lot of uh, time and effort and energy spent by the state uh, and money to clean up San Francisco pre this summit. Um, and somehow, you know, miraculously, they were able to just do it. So it's it, it's sad because if you can do it for something like that, why can't you do it for good? You know, I'm sure that's probably what everybody's thinking, listening to me talk right now is that seems like a bunch of bullshit. Well, it is. It is a bunch of bullshit. Uh, you know, we, we talk about every day, like the amount of homeless veterans in uh, but not just the United States, but around the world, um, but more so in the United States because it's such a much higher number. Um, and, you know, I think like John said, they found a quick solution. Uh, I can tell you as soon as that APEC summit ended and all those world leaders left, it's starting to look like the good old San Francisco that it looked like before. So pretty unfortunate. A, a breath of fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> how sad is that though? Like, but how true is that? Right. Like, just like what you said, there's there's no emphasis on the vets, and I think it's huge what you guys are doing, and you know, giving back, and it's kind of inspiration behind our our little project too. So, with with not to shill or just say anything, but we helped out the local VFW with some hams and turkeys from from royalties, not at the capacity you guys are doing, but it felt good to kind of contribute towards a greater good. And we need more of that. Starts with one man. That's yep. the thing. Right. Like, you know, it just takes one voice to rise up and start to do something. And, you know, usually you'll get others to follow. And I don't think there's any small or large scale. Like, uh, it's the service that our veterans have given in their lives. And first responders, like, we're not, you know, it's not just veterans. We're veterans and first responders because obviously our first responders uh, in the everyday work, I, I put a post up in the Discord today, like all those that got up today to answer the call while everybody was at home getting fat. You know, um, I wasn't trying to be an asshole, but. That's the reality of the world we live in. There are men and women that are getting up every day to answer the call 
well, you know, others just kind of go about their everyday lives and don't have to really worry about too much. So it's those same people that, you know, we just allow to be homeless. And, um, and I don't say we like us, but our government, and instead of, you know, creating solutions of support, it's just kind of become the status quo and it's bullshit. We're not okay with it. So we're going to, you know, we're going to be part of that change and part of the difference, but shout out to you, man. Like, that's awesome. That's dope. Like anything you can do, whether it's on a, like I said, small scale, large scale, it doesn't matter. Like you're making a difference. You're a part of impact. You're a part of change. That's something. Shoot. That's my only utility at this point, but it feels good. No, I, it's that's funny. dope, man. At least you have a utility, not like some of these other shit projects out there that are doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I saw a post like it was a, a big ETH project, but they're like XRPL projects are dead and worthless. It's like, yeah, there's been a lot of rug pulls, but that's like every chain, right? It's it's not just people trying to get a quick cash grab or I mean, they're out there and it makes every blockchain look bad. Right. But there's some real people out there. Yeah, I think we've we've talked uh, a little bit you know, the other night about, you know, doing some some work to call out the bad actors and, and really bring the light and the pressure on them um, as they rug people and, and take the investors money and, and just skirt off um, really doing something to, to call out those folks and, and really almost in a sense, police the police, the industry ourselves, right. You know, to help hold it to a higher standard, um, to, to not allow these folks to come in and, and continue to do this time and time again, you know, rug pull and then go and start another project and then go and do it again. Um, and somehow hold these folks accountable, um, and uh, I was had as a, had an interesting conversation actually with my my father last night. I was talking to him about the VFWs and and kind of what we're doing with the project and uh, some of the resources that we want to look to have under our five hundred one c three aspect. And um, you know, it was kind of interesting to have that conversation with him here about you know in in where he lives about how the VFWs are so different and and uh, how some of them really don't do a whole lot and. You know, as you um, um, didn't kind of brought a, an interesting perspective is is as time has gone on, there's been less and less veterans from each significant war that we fought um, as far as total number of uh, veterans from those. And it seems to be that, you know, some of these VFWs and things are, are really becoming um non-utilized to some of their potential right so uh, that may be something that we want to look at in inside dog face labs is is even uh, developing these relationships with some of these more active vfws in in cities and things like that that can uh, um, give us additional reach to some of these veterans to make a difference as well so I just wanted to share that with you guys and, and especially with you, Polly, because um, I think there's you know, definitely an area there that we can continue to work as we look to have more uh, impact in the real world as far as with veterans. Yeah, I know 100 percent, man. There's already conversations being had right now about, you know, obviously we're talking about building a retreat. And that's a, a massive undertaking, uh, but something that will happen. Uh, so it's not like we're saying, oh, we're going to do it. Maybe we're going to do it if we're going to do it. But it's something that's going to happen for us. Uh, but it, it is going to take some time for us to obviously produce funds to get to the point that we can do that. So in the interim, there are other opportunities that we can, you know, basically enact on our own. We don't need like help or support from the government from that standpoint um, or other resources. And so, some of that is working with, you know, the local VFWs, um, even the local, um, oh man, I just forgot, like the local Lions Clubs. Um, and then uh, recently, like in conversations, obviously bringing Leo into the team um, and having kind of the expertise and you know, kind of the effort and energy that Leo's brought is also uh, discussions around food banks and, Buildings that are no longer being occupied or used by our federal government can be leased for uh, pretty inexpensive rates to then go and open food banks and host opportunities for uh, our homeless veterans to come in and, you know, have a, a hot meal and take some food away, uh, providing transportation services to and from those facilities, like being able to continue to grow on kind of a smaller level. 
um, to start as we build to that large retreat. Uh, we're actually providing, you know, housing, uh, resources, education, job placement, job assistance, the learning center. Like it's, there's so much to be done, uh, but there's a lot that we can do now. So it's not like we're just sitting around on our hands waiting for the retreat to be built. We're acting and actioning on things um, kind of on a, on a micro level like now. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, with that said, uh, um, guys, we've been going uh, well over an hour now. I know uh, yesterday we went for quite a while. Um, I know uh, it is Thanksgiving here in the U.S. for uh, some folks uh, who still might be spending some time with family or have family over. So I don't want to continue to take up uh, too much of your evening. Um, I, th you know, I think we had a great conversation about some market updates and some insights. Um, is there anything from the panel that you guys would like to touch on as we start to look to wrap up the tonight space? Um, let's, uh, I'm going to spin the mic over to Leo because, uh, basically feeding off of, uh, what Polly was just saying, um, Leo, I know, uh, um, uh, you know, there's some good things coming down the pipeline. So I don't know if you want to feed off of what Polly was just saying a little bit as we look to wrap up the space. Yeah, just two quickies. Um, number one is the physical benefits. Um, we're, uh, me and Phil, have uh, been working together for 10 years and we're connected with the Africa group uh, that was started by a colonel from the military that used to work for the VA and now he's um, set up a, a team. And um, so we um, provide uh, no cost benefits and no service for any vet in the U.S. Um, you can ask any questions. You can, um, we can switch up a new benefits. We can also announce during community spaces like this what the new benefits are. Um, Christine is an advocate uh, for the Congress in our office, and um, she actually got two new uh, things added. I've already said it already, but I'll say them again. Um, Life Alert um, is now going to be added to the VA benefits. So you guys can get the uh, Life Alert now. And then number two, uh, the Part B benefit, uh, there's no penalty anymore. And if you guys are overcharged, you're getting back pay. Uh, so that got eliminated because of our group. And then the second thing is um, is the nonprofit. Um, um, when I moved to Springfield, Missouri, there's a group that uh, – did the same thing we're doing. Uh, they become a nonprofit, um, and then they found an old social security building, and they turned into a day uh, facility for the homeless in a food shelter and a, and a clothes shelter and a rec center. Um, they have education, um, and uh, and I had the idea of last Monday when we went on that conversation that uh, in the United States, like five ten years ago, I don't know if you guys remember this, but a lot of the post offices uh, in the rural areas closed. So now you you no more PO boxes in the in the rural areas. You have to go to the city to get your mail now. So you got all these abandoned post offices, and like like um, Paul was saying uh, last week to us, uh, they have a, um, a a dock, like a shipping dock, each one of them. So it's like it's perfect for trucks to come in and drop off food, and and um, we uh, we're going to be using a, a Samaritan's Purse. It's a national company and. They work with, with vets and with homeless. Uh, they provide uh, food and they just ship it to you. Uh, so it's really cost effective. And, and a lot of the stuff, uh, it's not a lot of out of pocket. It's already set up. You just got to know people and get it done. Yep. And that's, and that's what I love about us as we continue to deliver on the roadmap, you know, these, these other opportunities uh, come up to us to be able to, to continue to do these things as we continue to build out the Xeno mining, uh, increase our mining revenue, look for our next collections and keep the growing process going forward. Um, truly amazing stuff to be able to tap, to put it into practice as well. So, um, thank you, Leo, for the update. Appreciate that. Um, uh, yeah, if, Sir Cork, is there anything else you want to touch on before we look to roll out of the space tonight? Uh, no, I don't think I've really got anything to add. Just just to say that I really enjoy these spaces. It's um, is uh, like everyone that's in uh, NFTs and crypto. You when you talk to people in your real life, they all 
look at you sideways as if you're talking a foreign language. So it's just great to hang out with a bunch of like-minded people who uh, you can share ideas with and learn from. So, uh, yeah, look forward to the next one. Yeah. We're going to use Bitcoin to, uh, to fix everything, aren't we, with regard to some of these benefits for uh, for veterans and uh, the homeless that we're able to touch. So uh, I think, you know, let's take advantage of it, right? Um, we know that uh, it takes money to make some things happen, uh, especially here in the U.S., um, and if we're able to leverage the proof of work mining, leverage things like 501c structures for grants, donations, further further just building what we can do here for veterans and first responders. Uh, I think that's the beauty of it. And uh, I think that as more work is done in that realm, we'll start to see more eyes on us as well. And people understand what we're doing and can get behind the cause. And if we can onboard them into Web3, even better, right? So, uh, Polly, any kind of words of wisdom as we look to, to roll out from the space? I mean, I'd echo uh, what Cork said. Yeah, it's enjoyable just to come in and hang out. And I'm the same way. I'm sitting around on my family today through Thanksgiving. And, you know, just mentioning NFTs or crypto, people look at me like I'm nuts. But they're the same <laughs> people that are going to be, you know, looking at me four or five years from now when I'm living on land on a red earned retreat, you know, yeah. getting homeless pets off the street. So, yeah, yeah I think it's a good times, man. And uh, I don't want to hit anybody with the shill because I think everybody in this space right now is uh, part of our community already. Everybody here is already invested in Dogface Labs uh, in each collection. Like, But I would say shoulder tap, you know, shoulder tap some of your friends, um, some of the people that aren't, you know, like those people that you do mention it to and they, they give you that weird, crazy look, like get them in the Discord because that was me. That was me 32 months ago when, you know, Cam came to me and said, hey, man, you got to come check this project out. It's an NFT project. And I thought he was joking with me. And, you know, here we are today. So right. I think it's just a good opportunity. Uh, and again, because we're so early, right? Like we, it's funny, we talk about our roadmap. And I was just thinking about this when you were saying that, like, um, and Mark will agree, like our original roadmap that was written for Dogface was pretty small. And, uh, and I don't say that like in a negative way, like it was small, it had the retreat on it, it had the metaverse game, like it had a lot of the things that we talk about now, but that roadmap has grown exponentially. And there's been so much that's been added to it. I mean, just Xeno mining alone and mm -hmm. what that's going to do for our business and business structure. Like there's just a lot that's been added onto that roadmap and it continues to evolve daily. Uh, every day that we have conversations and new ideas are brought to the executive team with the opportunity for, for a potential increase in investment opportunities, it's just, yeah, it's awesome to be a part of an awesome to see, like everybody has a voice, you know, nobody, nobody should feel like, you know, you got to be quiet and, you know, I don't want to say anything and I'll just be a holder and be silent in the community. Like that's not what we want. We want people to come in and, you know, be heard and speak up. So if you're yep. in the community now. Um, yeah. Bring your ideas to the chats. Yep. Yeah, and and don't be afraid to, to share it. I, I I know we've had some new holders come in just from word of mouth, you know, people uh, talking about the project and what we're doing and and love it and hear about it. And we've had some new folks come into Discord and asking some great questions. It's you know turned to some other opportunities to share what we're doing uh, in some other spaces, you know, and gain some more attention on what we're doing. Um, and that's exactly what we want. We want to keep continue to keep this building process going. And, and you know, we have a big team that we continue to grind um, and perform. And that's what's led us to where we're at. And again, you know, as I always say, we wouldn't be here without our community. Right. So um, because a large part of them are not necessarily veterans or first responders, but may have family or just love that what we're doing as far as our cause Um for veterans and first responders. So, you know, that, that faith from our community is really what's, uh, you know, driving us forward. So, all right. Well, G, thank you for coming up, man. Uh, I don't know if there's anything more you want to say, but uh, we're going to look to wrap this up. I want to say thank you for coming and joining us. Thank you for what you've done with uh, what you guys are doing over there at community um, and doing every little bit makes a big difference. Um, and uh, we'll look to wrap up the space. All right, guys. Thank you again for everybody tuning in tonight.
appreciate you, all the speakers that came up and shared. Uh, we, uh, we will do this together. We'll win together. Let's all get to the finish line. All right. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Thanks, Rose and Vince. Appreciate yep. you taking the time, man. Yep. Have a blessed evening, guys. Appreciate you all. Thank you. Cheers, guys.